Welcome back. Well, we all want to look our best for yeah. as long as we possibly can. And hey, guys, that includes you, too. <laughs> yeah. As it turns out, more men are opting in for non-surgical facelifts. That's according to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. So hmm. what exactly are the options when it comes to non-surgical facelifts? Joining us today to tell us more about how we can all reverse the clock, because we don't want to participate <laughs> in that wrinkle thing. <laughs> We're going to talk about reversing the clock without having to go under the knife. Plastic surgeon Dr. Smita Ramadam is with us this morning. Mm. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us here on Morning on Merit Street. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Okay, let's start by discussing how do these non-surgical treatment options truly compare to the traditional surgical facelifts in terms of their effectiveness mm -hmm. and longevity? This is a great question, and oftentimes the question I get personally in the office, you know, we have to remember non-surgical options are great options, but they're never really going to be a true substitute for what we can do with surgery and with the power of what surgery can do, where we're really lifting, repositioning, and truly making structural changes to our face, skin, soft tissue. Having said that, the non-surgical options we have now in the, on the market are just truly amazing. We have got some really great technology that can give us improvements in some of those signs of aging, right? It, it can improve the texture and quality of our skin without really having the downtime and the cost of surgery. Dr. Ramanathan, let's talk about those. Is it a combination of lasers, injectables, both working together? Kind of walk us through the specifics. Sure. So, of course, a combination is really going to be ideal. Botox addresses muscles, so those active wrinkles that we create when we're moving our face. Fillers can help restore volume that we naturally lose as we get older. But also some of these non-surgical, non-invasive procedures, such as lasers, we've got really great technology now with radio frequency and ultrasound that can give us some of that skin tightening. So also improving wrinkles and fine lines and the quality of our skin. We have to remember as we age, really starting in our late 20s to 30s, we start losing collagen and elastin in our skin. And that's when we start to see some of the changes in our skin. So really a full combination treatment includes a little bit of everything. Yeah. So Dr. Ramanad, and this is a question, as you were saying, that I mm -hmm. thought of. How long do the results from the non-surgical facelifts typically last? So with non-surgical treatments, whether it's ultrasound, technology, radio frequency, oftentimes we do have to do multiple sessions to get to a good result. This can be anywhere from three to four sessions. And results typically can last about a year or so. So we, you know, these are things that we want to do continually over the course of um, our lifetime until we're sort of ready for the next step, which oftentimes is surgery. How do you determine which one is right for you? And I mean, some people may say, okay, if it's a combination of treatments that I've got to do frequently over years, that's going to add up to the cost of a facelift. Maybe I ought to go that route. Do you help talk people through that so they understand really what they're getting into? Absolutely. And I think this is why it's so important to go to a board certified plastic surgeon who really can talk to you about all of the options. So that includes anywhere from the not surgical to the surgical options, but a lot of this has to do with an honest conversation with the patient, what their goals are, um, what their ability is to take time off of work, their finances. These are all things that we want to, you know, they're part of the equation. And so based on that, we can sort of talk to patients about what each treatment option there is and what results they can deliver. And, um, you know, yeah, at some point, the cost adds up with all of these non-surgical options and facelift surgery might be the best option for you, but that's that's something to be determined during our consultation and that's why that's so important. You know, doctor, we talked about initially when we introduced this conversation, more men are coming and receiving a lot of these procedures. Are you seeing that increase and what do you think is driving more men to now consider these options? Absolutely, I, you know, I see it day to day in my practice. And I know the American Society of Plastic Surgeons recently came out with their 2023 plastic surgery statistics where they actually showed a 6% increase in men obtaining any sort of cosmetic procedure and 15% increase in facial 
procedures. Mm. And so I think, you know, our world is changing. There's a lot more focus on self-confidence and wellness. And all of these treatments were to fall into that category. We spend a lot more time on camera, whether it's Zoom, Mm. um, you know, people are working at home now, the selfie culture. I think all of that also adds to this newfound um, or increasing desire for all genders especially men getting procedures to make themselves feel their best. Interesting. Real quick, what procedures are men opting for? You know, a lot of non-surgical options. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the laser treatments, they're, like I said, they're soft wave, there's uh, Morpheus, there's all of these brand new, really great technology that we have that a lot of men are opting for that don't really have a lot of downtime. And people are not going to know that they've had these, these procedures. And of course, Botox fillers are always popular as well. Wow. Very eye-opening. Thank you for giving us your insight and your guidance this morning. Dr. Smita Ramanadam, we appreciate your time. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.